Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. This is Eyeshadow Palette Week and we are doing my spring palettes today. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This is going to be a video with my top 20 favorite eyeshadow palettes for spring, maybe to help you, you know, find out what you wanna go back to this spring, or maybe also if you're looking to purchase anything like a spring palette, maybe this video can give you some ideas. So let's just get to it. Before we get into the video though, maybe good to know who I am and what I like doing on this channel. My name is Maika, I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone and this greatly influences how I feel about makeup. I have been a reviewer for more than a decade. I love trying out eyeshadow palettes, SSA Catrice, and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in, I hope you'd like to consider subscribing. So yes, as I mentioned in the intro, I have 20 palettes here today. Now, not all of these palettes you can still buy. However, the majority you can still buy for sure. Um, I have a full range here of like different color stories I like. Um, these are all palettes, very often palettes that have been in my collection for a while. Some of these have been featured on a list like this before, where I've said like, hey, this is a great spring palette. And because I went back to some of my older palettes in March that I just feel are perfect for spring, I was like, I need to include those here as well. So if I sound like a bit of a broken record, then I do apologize. And if you only want cr creators to talk about things you can still buy, then please skip this video and skip the channel altogether because that's not what I'm about. I like going back to older products and going back to what I love. This channel isn't about the new, new, new. And I like doing these videos as well to sort of like, maybe if you have something lying about that you can go like, oh yeah, I have the Pella too, and Micah said it was great for spring, so I'm going to whip it out and see if I can do some looks. I hope to inspire you that way too. So yeah, like I said, there's a real mix here. I've got indie, I've got drugstore, I've got high end. There's a lot, because I was just like going through my makeup collection going like, what, what do I think is a good spring palette? So I grabbed a couple and was like, oh, I need to do at least a top 10. So I went to 10 and then I started counting and I had 12. I was like, oh God, maybe I can do a top 15. Oh, this could work, this could work, this could work. And then I got to a top 20. So bear in mind, strap in, grab a snack because we're gonna be here a while. Um, the thing that's lying on top, I'm just gonna do this in completely random order. These aren't ranked. I just think all of these are lovely for spring if you have them. I'm not sure if you can still buy this. This came back. I know on the e.l.f. website because I saw it on there. I bought this for the Christmas season of 2022. This was their limited edition Christmas release and they brought it back last year and I'm not sure if it's like a permanent one now, but what am I talking about? It's this guy. This is the e.l.f. Celestial Winter palette. Even though it's called Celestial Winter, this can work for the springtime. Like this has enough pastels and especially this like purpley thing in the middle. It has a bit of a duochrome. I think it's really, really pretty and ethereal and whimsical that it can also work for the springtime. You also get some warmer tone neutrals in this, which I think can really work for that. And also the bright blue you get in here can help it transition into the summertime because in the summertime, I would wear things like this and then like on cooler days, maybe something like this, but it has those like, like you can do a neutral look, but you have the pastels, you have some pretty shimmers. So I think the e.l.f. Celestial Winter is a palette that I feel so many people have been sleeping on because I'm the only creator who's really been featuring it, I think. Um, but yeah, I love this. It's one of my favorite palettes from the brand and I highly recommend it if you can still pick it up. By the way, I will leave some links in the description box for the palettes that you can still buy. Please be mindful because those links are going to be affiliated if they can be affiliated. So if you were to shop through those, I could make a bit of a commission. So if, of course, it's lovely if you do that. You don't have to, but it, it helps the channel because any money I make with the channel, I put towards either buying new equipment or makeup to try. So just so you know. Um, then I said I tried some palettes in March again that are older in my collection that I know I love. And one of the palettes that I have featured before in a best of spring palette video is this guy. And I, I do apologize because this is no longer available. It was discontinued so many years ago. 
But this is the Nabla Soul Blooming palette. I love the packaging of this. That's why I've kept the sleeve. And these are also the shades you get inside this palette. So we have those like periwinkles and the pinks and the peach. That's what's inside. And very contrary to what I tend to wear the most, I go for the warm tones in this palette. I go for the peaches. And this is one really beautiful shade. And I love contrasting it with the periwinkle that we get in here as well. So I love, like, you can go in quads with this. You can, like, just use the peachy tones. You can do a full-on warm tone neutral look with this. This has so many options. I really, really enjoy this palette. And I greatly enjoyed the look I did with it in March when I was using it again. As I mentioned, it's an older palette. Nabla no longer does this. But boy, do I wish they would bring this back because... This is one of the more beautiful, like most beautiful palettes I have ever tried in my lifetime. It's why it sticks around and I, it's just perfect for spring. And I know a lot of people always want to know what warm tones I do like, like to wear from time to time. And especially in the springtime, I like to go for these like peachy pinks that it has, which is why I have another palette in here that has that peachy vibe that I do like on myself. So this Nabla Soul Blooming palette, chef's kiss but since you can no longer buy that i think it's good to have an option that i feel is quite similar and this is one that's actually on my list to go back to for may so i will definitely be doing a look with the next palette that month and it's the lime crime venus 3 so i feel like again the packaging is gorgeous and i think that if you go through the official lime crime website a lot of their palettes are still available when i check regular retailers that stock Lime Crime, a lot of the palettes are always gone, but the official Lime Crime website usually has a lot of options. And I think this one is still on there as well. But here you can see that it has like a similar vibe to the Nabla. Is it exactly the same? No, it's not a dupe. But if you wanna get a similar look with like a peach and like a purple rather than a periwinkle with like some warm tone neutrals, this is the palette for you. I feel this has a little bit more like pink because this peach is quite pink on me and this is it rather than periwinkles as i mentioned it has the purples here so i i do really enjoy these shades as well and i'm hoping that when i use this again in may it's going to be as pretty as when i was wearing the soul blooming again in march because these i feel like in my brain they kind of belong together which is why i almost decluttered this one all those years ago like a few years ago i put this on the chopping block pulled it out at the last minute because I was like, mm, I can't part with this. And now I'm really excited to start using it again. So I just feel like with makeup and I also feel this way about my clothes, I definitely go in cycles and there could be like an item that I don't reach for for like a year or maybe even two years like this one. And then I go back to it and then I end up falling in love with it all over again, which is why I'm sometimes quite hesitant to get rid of certain things in declutters. Um, because I just feel I'm I'm just like I know myself really well and one of the things I love about myself is that I know that this is just how it works for my for me like I can be like ah, should I keep this around in my life and I'm like yeah but I do really like it it's just not really something I'm wearing right now but then I go back to it and I love it all over another color story that I think has like some of the best spring shades is this and this is the Natasha Denona mini retro so this is the little mini guy it has the two sagey greens I'll open it up so you can see a bit better so but you get sagey greens and then you get those peachy pinks and you get this really nice intense shimmer this is another really stunning palette for the springtime however we have seen many different renditions of this kind of palette and I, I just have all the renditions that I have in my makeup collection in this video today. This is just the first one. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is really, really pretty. I think it's stunning. You can do a lot with just five pans. And it's a great way to try some Natasha Denona. I think this is also my favorite of the three mini palettes I have from the brand. Because I feel it's the most versatile. Like, for me... I can do a green look with just the green shades. I can do just the peachy look with those two. If I want to amp up the shimmer, I can do that. I can do a look with all five. Like There are options here, which is what I like. 
These are great for travel. The only thing I wish it had is that the, the pens were removable. It's the only thing I wish it had. If it had removable pens and I could mix and match my Natasha Denona mini palettes a little easily and more easily, I would have, I would like this even more. And what is spring without a pastel? And my favorite pastel palette is the Pastel Pup from Menagerie. I don't own too many pastel color stories because I have this. Um, I do feel I could have used a shimmer or two more. Like I don't really like having the white and the black. Like on my skin tone, I don't need both. Like if, if this row could have been shimmer, I would like it a lot more because the shimmer we do get in it is very blue heavy. It goes with the blues and the greens, but it doesn't really go with the pinks and the purples and the peachy tones you get in here. But this is just your full on rainbow pastel color story, which is what I like. Like it goes from like a corally red shade to like the pink and then you have the periwinkle, lavender kind of shade. You have your orange, your yellow, your green, your minty green, and then two pastel blues. One that's more like a sky blue and one that's a little bit more periwinkle leaning. So yeah, I love this thing to pieces. I think it's really, really pretty. And yeah, if you just, if you're looking for a pastel palette, I think this may be the one. But I think, and I, I think this is now discontinued, which makes me very sad. And this is one where I'm also like, I'm gonna have to go back to this again very soon. It's the Mercury Retrograde from Huda Beauty. I think this is a stunning palette. And I think it's perfect for spring because it just, it has the whimsy of a spring palette. Like you get color, but you also get those pinky peachy things in the middle. Like you could do a full on rosy look with these shades as well. Like it just, it's it has options and it's quite, neutral cool toned leaning with a pop of color which is what i've always enjoyed so for the springtime like a rosy look for spring so pretty and this palette has it this palette has the rosy tones that i would like to wear for spring it has some things to warm things up um so if i want to do that like warmer tone neutral with a pop of greeny teal on the lower lash line it has that for me as well, so it bridges the gap towards the summertime and what I like wearing then. Um, it just has a really some really, really good shades, and I definitely need to put this one on a list for May or possibly June to go back to it and do some looks with it again, because I really like this one. And I looked at it in my collection, I was like, yeah, that's a perfect spring palette right there. I mentioned I was going to have many different renditions of the peach with a green sort of color story that the Natasha Denona Mini Retro has. My favorite one of everything that has ever come out that does that is this Lime Crime Venus XL2. This has been on the best spring palette list before. I, I know I featured it, um, but yeah, I just really like it. And I have mentioned this so many times, but Natasha Denona Retro Glam, eat your heart out because this one is better, in my opinion. In terms of what it gets from like rosy tones with sagey greens, I like this one better than I do the Natasha Denona. You get some more shades in here, you get some warm tone neutrals that are thrown into the mix, um, which I actually really like making that combination. I like the rosy tones in here a little bit better because they're more like neutral leaning, the ones in the Natasha Denona feel like a very weird warm tone clash that doesn't really go, whereas these ones go. And yeah, some of these shimmers are more like topper shades. So I have mentioned this so many times in the past, I felt that this palette came out at a time when we weren't ready for it. So it was vilified, nobody liked this, everybody was saying how terrible this was, but yeah. Everybody was calling out Natasha Denona for doing an actual large version of the mini retro for years. And I kept saying it's there. It exists. It's just, it's, it, it's not on anyone's radar. If you love color, I've got your back as well, because I think a really, really good color story to go for in the spring season is like your group blues, greens, and purples. And I wanted to put something more vibrant in the video as well. And then I thought cosmic brushes, serenity. I mean, this was a lot of people's favorite palette a couple of years ago when it first came out. And I have to agree, this is a really, really cool palette and it's a really cool brand as well. They're based in the UK, so a little easier for me to buy than 
something like Menagerie. And as you can see in here, you, you get pastels, but you also get the really deep things to deepen things up. You get some things that can pass as neutrals, but for the most part, it is a fully colorful color story. It's mainly matte. I could do with a shimmer or two extra, but yeah, this is a very pretty palette, and I think it's perfect for the springtime because these are the kind of colors that I would want to wear right now. Remember that March video? One palette I featured in my March uh, palettes revisited video was the Zoeva Melody. This was a request from one of my viewers and I'm so happy that this person requested this palette and me going back to it because I think the Melody is like one of my favorite Zoeva palettes I've ever I've ever tried. This is very much discontinued. Uh, Zoeva doesn't even do this kind of setup anymore in their palettes. They only do quads now, but you get like neutrals and then you get some like peachy tones and you have that purpley thing. It's got some duochromes. I'm not sure if you can see like here and here. Um, and Zoeva was doing duochromes way before any brands were doing duochromes and were popularizing it. They were again ahead of their time and nobody was really noticing them for it. Um, I think this is a really beautiful palette for the springtime, for sure. Sticking to the renditions of Natasha Denona mini retro vibes, I think this is actually pretty stunning. Uh, the petals on point for from ColourPop, I think is really good at giving you that light per pinky shade with some neutrals and some light greens. The light greens don't do much for me. I have to be very honest here. And I think that's because this, it just... It doesn't have enough green for it to really show up. It, it just looks white, so it looks a bit chalky. But the pinks in here are really lovely, and also the neutrals in here are really lovely. So that's why I like it. And I think it's it's really pretty for spring. I think it is best, though, for people with my complexion. This is not going to work for you if you have anything deeper than my skin tone. This is for the palest of the pale people, my fairy queens. If you're out there... Th th this is what's gonna work for you. So um, that's why I wanted to give this a shout out because I do also have some more intense things in here that if you have a deeper skin tone or if you prefer warm tones that you can get something out of this video. But this is for my palest of the pale snow queens of the world and I think you might really enjoy this one. Again, for the people who love color, I think this is a really, really stunning spring-like color story. It's by Kaleidos. This is their... Um, Glowing Iris Quad. What collection was this from? The, like, fut no, glow Futurism? No, those were the other palettes. I always forget what this collection is called with this packaging. Um, but here we have Future Nostalgia, perhaps. Wasn't that what it was called? I think it was. But this is what that color story looks like. It's Periwinkle Heaven. I like periwinkle in the springtime. I just really, really do. So this is like full on periwinkle. If you love color and this shimmer shade is life, you're gonna like this one. I mentioned if you love your warm tones that I would have a couple of, of options in this video for you as well. I think a stunning springtime warm toned option is the Juicy from Tarte. This, however, like it's not perfect for me. I like the pinks, I like the neutrals, but this middle row is really throwing me off. However, it works. It just pulls a lot more warm tone on my complexion than I had expected, but this is so pretty. And I think that these like warmer pinky tones can be so pretty if you have a warm undertone, especially if you have like light to medium skin. This is going to be your palette and it has the amazing Tarte formula. I've mentioned in the past how I really enjoy Tarte. As a formula, the Tartlet in Bloom is one of my all-time favorite palettes, especially for that reason. And this palette is just giving that formula, but with a warmer tone color story with pinks. It doesn't get more spring like this. I mentioned the Marge video, and another palette I featured in that video was the Deuce from Juvia's Place. This is, I think, one you can still buy, but it seems to be like, be, sometimes it's on the website and sometimes it's not, so if you want to pick this up, you would have to like just put on an alert, I think. But again, like it's the peach for me. The peach that makes it very spring-like, but the peach with the pink with the green, 
it's so perfect for spring, come on. And it has neutrals, so if you are a neutral gal like me, you could do a full on neutral look with that stunning pink shimmer all over the lid. I personally really enjoy this uh, grayish silver that has a lot of green running through it. I love this in the crease. Whenever I use this palette, this goes in the crease, like default. So pretty, really stunning. And yeah, I hope that this is still available because it's just, it's really, really perfect for spring. And this is one, again, one of the things that I still have in my collection are a lot of my older jo uh, Juvia's Place palettes because they just have the unique color stories that I feel I can't find anywhere else. So if they still do this, definitely check it out. And then I was having a dig through my collection. I was like, but this guy is very spring-like too. This is from What's Up Beauty. This is the Geodes palette. And I do have to be very transparent here. So just for transparency, this was sent to me in PR. But look at this. You have your rosy tones that are perfect for this time of year. You have some warm tones here with a pop of green. I'm like, yes, please. Could you do a full on neutral look with this? Also, yes. So it just has a lot of options. You could go a little bit more colorful. It has some really stunning shimmers in. And what's even better is because What's Up Beauty is a US based indie brand. If you're in the EU, they are stocked through Monolith. So this is something you could potentially purchase at a little bit of a markup, but you wouldn't have to pay the very high shipping and handling fees if you are in the EU. So I love that they are now available through there and that I can, I can, I can feel a little safer recommending this to people who live in the EU. But if you're in the US, like the, the packaging, look at, the, look at the packaging. It's just, and it's really nice and small and curated. And this is an indie brand that I feel has a lot going for them because they do some more unique things and they just do some really nice brushes too. So if you're looking for new brushes, check out What's Up Beauty because they do some really nice things. A uh, more like a longer staple in my collection that is a, is not 100% right for me, but Again, I can see this palette working for so many people for the springtime, and it's the Sigma New Mod. Mine got purple eyeshadow on in my most recent declutter, so mine looks terrible. That's what you get with velvet packaging, I guess. But here's what the New Mod looks like. So stunning. It's a rosy tone palette. It is, I wouldn't want to call it warm tone per, per se, because the only warm tones you really get are in here. This is quite cool toned. And this is quite cool tone, save for the gold. Um, so it, it's got a good mix of like both warmer and cooler toned. It just goes very deep. So if you have deeper skin, this is going to be lovely on you. On me, it was a little bit too glam for every day, but you know, if you have a party or something, this can really, really work. So Sigma New Mod, very pretty indeed. If you want to go for your intense rosy shades, I would highly recommend. And the final palette that I used again in March is the Blueberry Muffin from BH Cosmetics. This is of course like a neutral tone palette with blues. And I love a bit of blue. I really, really do. I especially like pops of blue in the summertime, but there's just something about this palette that makes me go spring. And especially based on the look I did when I used this again in March, uh, I always have to use these two shades when I use it. Um, but I went in with this in the crease, which normally I would go for the gray and then it's more of a winter palette. I don't know why. Grace and winter and me, we just go together. But this brown was actually really pretty. It did turn out to be pretty glam and pretty intense, but I really liked the look and it was perfect for the springtime because you get some blue sparkle in there and it was just really, really pretty. And I think very, very spring appropriate indeed, which is why Blueberry Muffin from BH. I'm sorry, this is no longer around. It's very much discontinued, um, but there are blue tone color stories on the market that might be able to give you something similar. And I said the Natasha Denona mini retro vibe was in here. And I do think that the original retro glam is definitely a very good spring-like color story for sure. So I'll pop a picture up on the screen what the palette actually looks like because this one doesn't look like this anymore because I've changed a lot of my Natasha Denona palettes around. 
um, because they do have the little holes in the back so you can very easily take them out and rearrange them and this is what mine looks like. I took out the pinks <laughs> and I put in some extra cooler tones from I think the glam but I've kept the greens in there and now it's just like a cool tone neutral color story with pops of green which I like which is also very spring like but I think the original color story with the pinks is what makes it spring for me it's like you know when you look at a flower you get the green from the stem and then you get the rosy pinks from the petals and, and that's why I also like petals on point that's why I like the lime crime venus xl2 it's why I like my mini retro do I need four color stories that is do essentially the same thing in my collection? No, I don't. So do I feel regret reorganizing this? Not at all. I still have all the shades. I could very easily put it back together, but I went back after reorganizing these color stories and used them as is. And I like it so much better now. So <laughs> for me, this is just a really perfect palette, but yeah, the recommendation is for the original color story that you can actually buy. So just being very very clear here again if you like some more color then maybe the hella palette from odin's eye if you have it lying about could be something here but i especially want to feature this because i feel it has something that i think spring is all about which is the pop of green with the pop of pink that combination is what makes this palette a spring palette for me you're gonna have to ignore the deeper shades at the bottom but the green with the pink. And there are so many palettes that have greens and pinks in. If you have other color stories in your collection that are a little bit more colorful leaning, I think you might already have something like this. So even though this palette has been discontinued because it was a limited edition collection because it was a collab with Angelica Nukvist and Odin's Eye, um, I think that just the vibe of like pinks and greens that this palette has is what makes it a spring palette for me and I think you can find it elsewhere um, but yeah this is a really nice color story for sure that's why I like it that's why I keep it around Odin's Eye as a brand can be a little hit and miss for me so that's something to bear in mind so maybe if they do something similarly like this for you right now then I'm Odin's Eye would probably not be my first pick however Alien Cosmetics or Unearthly has a couple of palettes that have this I also have the strawberry milkshake, which I almost put into the video, but it was like, mm, to me, no, it's it's not necessarily spring. That's more of a summer palette to me because it is a bit more vibrant, um, but there are plenty of other uh, places that do like the greens with the pinks. The, the Warlock palette from Fantasy Cosmetica has it. Um, I feel that any sort of blue green color story, blue green purple color story very often has like a pink category. So you could do something like this with um, something like the Blend Bunny Lure as well. The Serenity palette will give you a similar vibe. So do you really need that particular palette to get the look? I don't think so. Um, but there are plenty of indie brands that do something like it. For the bougie option and the peachy pink option that I mentioned earlier, I would like to recommend the Pat McGrath um, Mothership 9. Is it 9? Yeah, 9. Utopian Dream. Um, and this, like, I kept this over the Vine Rose 2 because I like this color story a bit better for my complexion. But this, especially this, with, with this on, like, in the inner corner, lower lash line, all over the lid, that juxtaposition is what makes this spring for me. So it's those like peachy, rosy tones. And again, like those rosy tones that we get in the Sigma and the pinks that we get in the Tarte, those like warmer, rosy, peachy, pink vibes, I think are perfect for the springtime. Perfect for the springtime. So this is a lovely spring option. Again, if you have it, or maybe if you were feeling like giving yourself a bit of a splurge because these are expensive, uh, then the Pat McGrath Utopian Dream is one that I would recommend you look into for a great spring option. And the final palette is what's on my eyes today. It is the Lance of Enchantment from Ensley Rain. This is a very pricey palette as well. I'm saving the pricey options for the end, it seems. And I'm only now testing it out, so I can't really say much. This is going to be in my April review, so if you stay tuned for a couple of weeks, I'm currently doing the looks as we speak to test out the palette. So I've only used it for the first time today. So I'm wearing 
all of these shades on my lids. So those five um, is what's on my lids today. So if you were wondering what's that like sparkly prettiness, it's this palette and it's this shade right there in case you were wondering. Um, very pretty palette. It has pastels, but then it also has the jewel tones. So this could be a fall palette and then this is the spring palette. But yeah, for spring, I figured that this, because it is like essentially a pastel blue, green, purple palette, with lots of really pretty shimmers, like very ethereal, whimsical. That's why it has the fairy on the front um, and the fairy tale castle, a castle on the back. Um, that's why I think this is just a perfect spring palette. Um, so far, based on just using it this one time, I'm already really impressed with the formula. Um, but yeah, I can't really, like, I first have to try all the shades before I can say anything about it. So stay tuned for my full review, which is coming at the end of the month. And those are all of the eyeshadow palettes I wanted to recommend to you for the springtime. Let me know in a comment down below what your favorite spring palette is. I would love to know. These are just some of my picks, some of them that I've been raving about as a spring palette for years. And then there are a couple of new picks in here as well. So I will leave all the links down below so that you can purchase any of these in case you were looking for that. If you're looking for reviews, what you can do is just type the name of the palette into the search bar on my channel and you will find it. Or you can go over to the blog because some of these are so old that I probably have a blog post on them instead. So some of these I've had for a while. So yeah, thank you so very much for being here today. Thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos every single week, so I'd like to stay tuned. And I have some more videos coming for you in Eyeshadow Palette Week. So hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.